G'day punters, welcome to the mailbag. Pete Anthonis, Shane Kelio here to preview a couple of the feature races from Morfittville, Adelaide, Carnival time. It's kicking off in earnest there this Saturday, but also in Queensland, Curls. Eagle Farm has two Group 2 races coming up. Amazing. Two Group 2 races on one of Australia's best betting tracks, Pistol. It's cool. tantalising. I know, that is this afternoon's job for me. I'm going to go through the entire Eagle Farm card, see if I line up with you. But you've already done a preview for Eagle Farm for subscribers through the app. Mm -hmm. So how do they access that? We're offering a discount on my product for the um, Winter Carnival, 30% off. So it's not too late to join. The Winter Carnival is only just firing up. Um, Themailbag.com.au, go to the shop, find my full curly service. Uh, do a race by race full meeting preview uh, that sent to subs on Thursday. But I had a couple of sneaky bets yesterday, Pistol. So I, on um, on the Wednesday, so I sent the subs the preview for those two races. One of them was the victory stakes, oh. in fact, where we see that we see the return of Rothfire. Um, there's an old saying, Pistol: back the fastest horses that race on speed. Fastest horse in the race that races on speed or good bets? That was Confucius, wasn't it? I think it was. <laughs> um, if not him, it was um, it was in that book, The Art of War. <laughs> Sun, Sun Shay or something that wrote that. Magnificent. When in doubt, back the fastest horse in the race. Okay. That's, that's Rothfire. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. But I go into a lot more detail pistol than just that okay very good well but it's, it's good i'm looking forward to, to to the car because i can open the punning form uh website and trust the data at eagle yeah. farm now it's it's um for someone that's battled betting on eagle farm for the last you know four or five years during renovation after renovation after renovation it's it's um it's, yeah, it's a it's a big thing I like it. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> it's been an emotional five years betting at Eagle Farm. I might have to take some tips off you given I'm having to deal with Pinjara Scarp side at the moment. Um, <laughs> now, you mentioned also it's like a busy week coming up as well. We've got the bull coming up, so Jackson will be on course you know, Tuesday through Thursday. But you're also going to be doing your part to help out with a bull's extravaganza, yeah. bull ganza. A bull ganza. And normally I'm critical of programming of racing Queensland, but this just makes sense to me, and I'm glad they've done this. It'll be interesting to see how many horses we have to race in these races yeah. in South East Queensland because from next Monday's Ipswich, so if you say so Brisbane and Toowoomba is like a hundred <laughs> an hour and forty minutes away, right? Yeah. So all these sort of places are in between. Monday Ipswich, Tuesday Warwick, Wednesday Eagle Farm. And Thursday, Gatton. So to coincide with the bull, I've got Warwick, Eagle Farm and Gatton. Beautiful. Thankfully, it's only Oakley picnics on Friday, so I'm going to have Friday <laughs> off before we tackle Saturday. <laughs> well, I'm going to be betting every day next week uh, that the bull's on. I'll be betting the Queensland meeting. It's just like... It's a punter palooza. It's, it's the only, only way to live, really. Hmm. Mm. Okay, uh, shall we have a look at Morfittville? We'll start off in the Breeders' Stakes Race 5. You've got this nice horse, See You in Heaven, favourite, $2.80, best available from four fifty. Eye of the Eagle and four eighty Twin Stars. You've got Street Delight, seven fifty. dollars La Laguna at nine fifty. Is it as simple as we saw how good this horse was last start and if it repeats, it wins? This on the parks track? This is on the... So Morfittville itself, <laughs> the actual Morfittville track, is races five, yeah. six, seven, so the three features. The rest of the card is on the parks track. So for yes. uh, it's on the punting form, you go to Morfittville, it's race. It's the first race listed of the three. I don't well, know why they do this stuff in Adelaide, but it's very confusing, but I'm sure there's some logical reason for it. Now, I'm going to go full disclosure here on this race, Peter. Yep. Um, 
I actually inquired to purchase this horse. <laughs> See you in heaven. <laughs> off the strength of its last start data. Now, if anyone is sort of like saying, oh, bullshit, Kelly, you can ask Mark Roden because Mark Roden ran into an owner <laughs> at his local pub. Now, I know that Mark does have about six locals around the Abbotsford area. Yep. But he ran into an owner of this horse and um, not even interested around the half million mark. Okay. I don't even know whether I should be saying that on this show or not. They, did they just give you the old line that didn't even say see you in heaven we'll see you in hell and then just like gave you a finger um, through just clearly just she's not for sale was was the feedback um yeah so she was like a ninety thousand dollar yearling um off a queensland farm at the magic sale and uh i think it was magics and um um you know she's not she's by divine profit you know it's not as if it's a mm. you know massively commercial job but um you just like you can only believe what you saw last start and it was like super impressive i know it had that you know the big sp there um but i'm just like team believe your eyes here and and now we've got the data to back it up it went as good as what it looked yeah and like it has to regress or something's going to have to find five well, that's probably an exaggeration. Something's going to have to find three or four and it's going to have to regress a couple for it to get beat. Yeah, and you're looking through some of these rivals. So Eye of the Eagle is one of them. It's coming off a, a first start, first career start at Caulfield uh, in a listed race. It ran second behind Cannonball. And look, it settled leaders back, very slow tempo. Okay figures going through the line. So there's something there. Um, yes, there gate two here. And then probably the other horse I'm looking at is La Laguna for the Ma Ustas camp, more because of the camp more than anything, but it's come off a fifth at Sandown and then a second at Ballarat when leading. I look, you know, there, there's probably going to be some level of improvement there, but would need everything perfect to suit, I would suggest, based on what we've seen data-wise. So outside of those two, you know, I don't really think you can make too many more cases here. And look, Twin Stars is probably the one that has a little bit more unknown. It wasn't necessarily suited in its one one run so far. Mm. Had an okay SP on that occasion. It's had one trial since. So, yes, it's yeah, difficult. Like, it is. Now, obviously, with two-year-olds particularly, they, mm. can, they, can, um, they can improve and they can certainly regress race to race at such young horses. Um, the thing that I keep coming back to with this horse though is um, like it, the, the finish is so strong yep. on the on the figure. So it's not as if it's a speedy squib. You know, sometimes you get them real fast thousand metre jump and run types and then, the, you know, you, you get them to, um, you know, you get them to 11, 1200 and they're just not the same horse. So this one, the strength of its sec closing sectional suggest to me it improves to 1200 yeah um so much so that this is the bet of the day saturday <laughs> i'm not going to i'm not going to declare things morals and certainties anymore right because that's yeah. just like you might as well just like tie a noose around your neck tie it to a <laughs> sapling and water it and when it eventually grows you'll eventually neck you because it, like you're asking for trouble yeah um I'll, this is the bet of the day. This could this will start at even money, and win. And if it doesn't, Peter. Yep. Don't know why I do this to myself. I'll go to Gatton on Thursday, and I'll do a Facebook live from the Manning Yard for every race. If see you in heaven gets beat. Okay. Rain, hail, or shine. <laughs> I will be there in the Mounting Yard at Gatton on Facebook Live doing race by race from the Mounting Yard if See You in Heaven goes under here. I'm sure that Gatton, it doesn't get beat. The Gatton Turf Club is surely death riding the horse now. Had some good times at the Gatton Turf Club <laughs> over the years. <laughs> oh, I really like this horse. It's a, like, I wanted to buy it. Uh, I inquired for a trainer. Um, yep. Um, and buy it and bring it straight to Brisbane for the Winter Carnival. This is a, you know, who knows from there. This yeah. is, I really like this horse. Yeah. 
All right, good push for the favourite there. See you in heaven in the Breeders' Stakes. Uh, race seven is the race I wanted to look at. The Australasian Oaks. I've never understood why it's called the Australasian Oaks as opposed to just the South Australian Oaks or, you know, whatever. Mm. Uh, group one, 2,000 metres. Market has currently at the top of the tree. And we've got to bear in mind that El Patroness has come out. So now my whisper is favourite around the $4.40 mark. Uh, Bonza Perla, Daisy's next line around nine fifty. Glint of Hope, 10. Mac and Cheese, 11. Uh, Doser and So You See around $13 with Marmunia. We'll roll with that. All right, girls. Now, my whisper last start, we both found. I don't, I'm not exactly sure the horse is suited. I've had to go back and watch the replay a couple of times. On the one hand, I think it was suited in the sense that it just kept momentum because a lot of that field wasn't much good. But at the same time, that wasn't necessarily the pattern of the day. It was very much an on speed style day. You need to be more forward than that. Uh, the horse was into the right. widest lanes late and just was never looked like losing once it hit the straight. Uh, that's probably my starting point. I still think this horse is going to be really difficult to beat. J Carr jumps on. It seems mm. to map incredibly well from gate three. She can basically put the horse wherever. And again, it doesn't look like there's a huge amount of speed on paper. I'm not sure what a few horses are going to be doing drawn wide. I think most of them will probably Bob. go back. But yeah, I don't see there Except being... Except for Barb Raider, tempo. probably. Yeah, that's your, Sorry, your most wide ones, Barb, Barb Raider looks the obvious, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think probably Stray will come across as well. Um but yes, Jamie Carr yep. really can just put this horse wherever she likes. Yeah. Geez, it's a fair upgrade too, isn't it? Yeah. With all yeah. due respect to Will Price, um, you've got, you know, um, Glenn McGrath's cousin, who are Jamie Carr, <laughs> going on here. Um, it's a fair upgrade. She's ridden the horse before, one on it, um, gets the map, just like, have a look at its have a look at its data through the line. It's last six, four, and two. Yeah, very strong. Yeah, it gives every indication that the extra two hundred meters is not going to be a problem at all. Mm. Can we try and find something to beat it? Like I, when I did this race for the previous show, I was like, okay, start with um, my whisper, and I'll probably end there. Um, but we need to be a little bit objective. Obviously, I. Put the mock on um, <laughs> Daisy's last start. <laughs> um, called it immoral, and it was disappointing, um, to say the least, I thought. Um, yeah, look, it was, but, you know, again, like slow tempo, and again, wasn't suited, yeah. suited versus the pattern of the day. But, um, you know, there, there's probably a small excuse there, but the, the map here, again, isn't exactly easy. Doesn't suit. No. Even with the, even with the, even with Zara on, who's a, a complete and utter big race gun. Yeah. Um, it looks difficult for it, doesn't it? Yeah. Look, there's a little bit of prospect here with Bundle of Fun, who's also um, in race six on the card, but draws a lot better here and now gets a start with El Patroness coming out. So, look, yep. there is something yep. there at a bigger price. Um, so, yep. You See, I think, has some claims as well. I don't think that horse is necessarily suited. So, for me, So, You See is my saver. At the double figure quote, or actually, I can probably back both to get a decent enough result. They're the two, and look, I'm sure Bonds of Perla will probably have some admirers once again because it just always runs on. But I guess looking at its late data off similar tempos, it profiles very similar to my whisper. But I've got more confidence in my whisper getting the extra distance in a multitude of circumstances with Bonds of Perla. I think would probably need everything to suit and still need a bit of luck and running. Mm. Just on so you, so you see, because I was going to bring that up also. Um, uh, I don't know whether it sort of fits that narrative of would have liked to seen it have one run at a little bit closer distance to, to the 2000. Yep. Coming off those couple of 1600 metre runs. Um, but certainly we saw in the data, it was um, from last start, it was certainly, um, its sectionals were strong. You know, the longer the race went on, it was powering through the line. So, what about Barb Raider? Um, do you you've got to forgive last start on the on the bog track? 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm ignoring it for sure. Um, it's just a case of, you know, Craig Williams on board will probably do what Craig Williams does best and just let it roll forward, take his time, rack and stack. Mm. Yeah. You know, it has had a run at 2,000 metres at Flemington previously, ran fifth on that occasion, beaten two lengths. But again, that was a very slow tempo. I don't think you necessarily learn anything from that wakeful stakes, like even just opening up the, the race itself. Yeah, I, yeah. Hasn't sort of looked like a, a sit and sprinter at this sort of trip, you know, mm. 1,600 metres and beyond, um, or sort of 1,800, I suppose. We've got a couple of examples there where, you know, off the very slow tempo, over 16, he was able to um, to dash a bit late, but that was coming off a like 11 length slower than average yeah. lead time. So he was entitled to, but looks a horse that can get on speed and would need to sort of roll along a little bit, eh? not not try and stack them and rack them. I think it'll get out sprinted. Yeah, look, oh, it's one of those where you can probably make those minor cases for a few of these, but the simple fact is if we're getting, say, $4.40 for my whisper, um, I've got it marked with a three and a low three in yes. front, and that's not being particularly generous. I've actually not necessarily penalised the horse, but I, I haven't actually given it any bonus for the map. I haven't given it any bonus for the jockey change, and I haven't really given it any penalty for, for last start either in terms of, you know, you could make the case that it wasn't suited and you could give it a little bonus there, and I've chosen not to. So with all of that said and done, it looks incredibly hard to beat. How refreshing is it just doing Adelaide um, with these nice races and finding these few nice horses and just betting up and winning? It's apart from that little blip on the radar that we call daisies, um, <laughs> but we were on my whisper on the same day. So yeah. we, it's just they're, they're they're two great bets. They're two at the current prices that are available. They they are two bets as good as any bet that you'll find around the country. I completely agree at the prices. And looking around some of the other tracks you have to bet on at the moment or you have the choice of betting at, it just, at least with with Adelaide, you can just basically, it's probably to the same extent like you're finding at Eagle Farm. You, your map is, to a certain extent, a best guess of where you're going to sit, but you're not too worried about the inside half of the track being complete garbage or there being yep. 4,000 mils of rain in the previous four days. Uh, it's just makes things so much easier. I, I honestly don't know how people bet in Sydney permanently when you do the form on a Thursday and then suddenly you've had 48 scratchings on a Saturday morning. I've sort of been tracking a little bit of Sydney stuff and I've worked out how to win in, on Sydney <laughs> is you don't bet until Rob Scurry sends a notification yeah. from the yard and then you just bet. Oh, he's been absolutely on fire, Rob. He's he ridiculous. Just, he's it's gone to a new level ridiculous. in the last twelve months. It's actually staggering to watch, and full full credit to him because and to give a bit of and to give a bit of insight into the into the great man's mind, he's like apprehensive about going to the races <laughs> this carnival because of this bloody weather. Yeah, and he's oh, he's destroyed it. Yeah, he's killed it. Um. And just having that ability to, for, from a punter point of view, and it's like a great thing with our Platinum Pack product, is you can you get early and late. So yep. you can make those adjustments um, on the race day. If you take a price and then you get a negative track report or a negative you know, yard report, you can adjust as need be. It's, um, it's the way to bet. We, we might very well have a, a debate about this at some stage in the near future in the deep dive, but the, the merits of betting early, the merits of betting late. And how, what, what's the better way to bet profitability-wise? Yeah, long I've certainly adjusted pistol. I particularly found on in this current market, you know, of that like, um, uh, you know, I got sucked into a couple this week mm. that I had marked a lot shorter, but I didn't get. I did, they didn't get there at SP where that, um, you know, that one ninety to two thirty range. There's absolutely zero point betting early unless you think it's going to start a dollar fifty. Yeah. Basically, because they never seem they just don't seem to be getting that short. Maybe it's a bit of recency bias for me, but um it's certainly something that we should put on the agenda for a deep dive. Maybe not race day related, like yep. a preview, but maybe something to talk about. Well it's a decent enough weekend coming up. We'll have plenty to talk about on Monday and we might give a bit of insight as to what's going to be happening next week with the 
week of too much betting is not enough betting. I'm sure we can find something else to bet on if need be. But, uh, well, what what we have done is found the two best bets in Australia. So let so have those bets in Adelaide and then buy the platinum pack and find the best bets around the rest of the country. <laughs> Sounds perfect. All right, girls, I'll catch you <laughs> on Monday. Excellent. Look forward to it.